Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Hello, welcome to a different kind of video as today's upload is brought to you by Tempest Tower of Probatio, a brand new collectible card game that has officially just released. As you can see here in the notification, they have the official launch announcement. They say Tempest Tower of Probatio has now officially launched. With over 300 cards and a variety of deck building options, you can build your strategies like never before. And what we're gonna do today in this video is we're gonna dive into this game and see what it's got to offer. I played already quite a bit uh, off camera, uh, adjusting myself to the game and understanding, you know, what what it's all about. Even though I have already talked about this game in a pre-roll that I made uh, about a week ago, the game hadn't officially released. So I had like all the theory, but I couldn't really get my hands dirty and try things out, right? Now I can. And what I got for you guys today is a pretty, you know, basic deck. I have a starter deck, okay? Cause I, I literally just started. I barely have any cards. And uh, this is what I'm, I'm playing with right now. We have a total of 14 cards. As you guys can see here, cards have two different stats. They have uh, energy, which is the blue uh, number. That is how much it costs for you to play this card. And they have a power output, which is the red number, uh, which is the amount of power that the card is giving you, right? You win a game by essentially apply more power to two out of the three towers which in within the board every match has three different towers they all have no abilities or anything so it's it's quite different from the location system in marvel snap for example but uh you can actually add abilities onto these towers later in the line with cards that do so right uh our deck is you know pretty basic uh like i mentioned it's got uh it's kind of like a starter deck at that, but there's already a lot of very neat effects here. We got Kraken, for example, who destroys a random card from both you and your opponent at this tower. We have the Knight Commander, which essentially, uh, when placed on the center tower, will give two power to the flanks randomly, but it will be two power applied to each uh, of those towers as well. We got King Kong. King Kong doesn't really have an ability. King Kong is just six energy, nine power. Nice. And then we got we got something like Oni, which is just, yeah, even further. The games are seven turns, all right? Seven turns. Turn one, you got one mana. Turn two, you got two mana. And you repeat that until turn seven, where you have seven mana. And you got to win two out of the three towers. And you can do stuff to change the tower stuff. That may seem like it's all, but if you remember, if you recall the pre-roll that I did, um, I talk about the pick and ban face. And in order to explain that, we're going to get out of a game. And I'll stop rambling so much. Get out of a match and actually showcase what that's about. We're facing Ivory, and now we have the ban face first. The ban face means I get to look at my opponent's deck, which is extremely similar, if not identical to mine, because <laughs> it's a star deck. And we're gonna ban one card, and I'm gonna choose to ban Kraken, because uh, through my experience, Kraken can be very swingy in the mid game. Uh, even though it's a symmetrical effect, you can play Kraken in the, in the tower where there's nothing um, on your end, and you can get a significant boost from that. So I'm, I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna ban Kraken. They ban King Kong. They always ban King Kong. People just do not like the big boy King Kong. And now is the pick face, ladies and gentlemen. Now is when every match we get three different heroes randomly thrown at us, and we have to choose one of them, and they will be in our starter hand. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's let's actually take a look. We got Gilgamesh, Sorceress, and Landslot. Gilgamesh reminds me of like Fate Zero. Increase the power of your cards with no abilities in all zones by two each. No, that's not really gonna help us. Um, I, I kind of, I, I, yeah, I, I was, I spent too much time reading them. <laughs> we got the hero, we got the hero of old, Gilgamesh. Okay, so we're gonna have to like, uh, that was not gonna be my pick. <laughs> Screw this up. That was not gonna be my pick, but we'll make it work. We have a great draw here though, because our opponent played Tier. Tier is a one mana unit that will be increasing or their power by one every turn that they're winning at that tower. So this is a snowball -y threat that we want to destroy immediately, and we got the perfect card for it. We got the anime variant of Egyptian Judge, which destroys all cards, all cards with cost one at the uh, tower that we play them in. So we play the Egyptian Judge on the right, and we knock out Tier, and we stop that snowball -y effect right on its tracks as it develop an elf onto the Tower of Perseverance. Right now we are tied. We have Athena. Athena is not really ideal to be played on curve because as you guys can see, she increases her power by one for each card in this zone. So she's actually better to be played later because there's gonna be more cards and more of a buff. But for now, we can just play a three mana, four power play if we develop her alongside the Egyptian judge in the Tower of Wisdom. 
They play the Mad Clown, aka Keck Insane. Keck Insane here allows them to ramp. It's only for one turn, though. I was terrified by this card at first. I thought, I, I thought it was for the entire game. I was like, what the hell is so broken? But it's actually... No, you actually have to read cards in a card game. It's important to read cards in a card game, and that card is actually fine. Because it's only this turn, but this turn they can play five energy. Um, I'm going to lead off with Captain Kid, because Captain Kid has an effect that... Essentially, you want to play him on turn four, because we place the... Um, we place the pirate ship. And if we draw the pirate ship, we can double his power, essentially. I'm going to play Captain Kid into the Tower Perseverance, though. I'm going to contest that elf location as they double up in the middle. With Cthulhu and Egyptian Judge. Egyptian Judge having no... He's very confused because he has no target in the middle. And now, this is the point of the match where we can decide to increase the odds. Or basically, what we're betting for this match. A mechanic that also reminds you... Uh, you know, familiar one at that. We whistle. And we get... Now there are six stars on the line here. But we're confident. We're very much confident. We got Mad Clown. We got uh, Tear. I could play Knight Commander, but I could also just play Majorna into Tear. Focus on the flanks. Because Tear will continue to grow. Tear's the card that they played at the beginning that we killed, but now we're going to use it against them. They play Undine in the middle. They're overcommitting in the middle. They're overcommitting in the middle. And now is when we think, okay, so Hero of Old. Increase the power of your cards with no abilities in all zones by two each. See, the, pr the problem is like ability, 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 ability. So, yeah, that was a useless hero pickup. <laughs> what about you, Nessa? Increase power by one for each other for each of the other cards you played. One, two, three, four, five, nine. I'm going to commit Hebe to the right. Because now I have two ongoing effects there, right? Like, I have Tear and I have Hebe. So I'm continuing to grow, and they need an obscene amount of points. We're going to tap. As we draw into Kraken. Kraken may be the perfect draw here. Or maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Four, six, you're ten points. I think I'm going to go Knight Commander into Mad Clown. Because this means I can put even more power on the right in case they manage to catch up to it. Because I don't expect them to commit to the per Tower of Perseverance. I think that's the one place where they're not going. And they just commit more on the middle. For some reason. And uh, yeah, we just completely blow them back. So we picked a hero in the pick phase that actually had no synergy with our deck whatsoever. That kind of makes this win a little bit bittersweet. But it's fine. It's fine because you know what? We're going to go for another one. And this time, we're not going to screw over the uh, the pick phase. Because <laughs> I, I can't multitask, right? I can't multitask. It's hard to explain and do things, okay? It's that easy. All right, so another, another starter deck here. I'm actually going to get rid of their Oni this time. Because I, I was really scared of, of Oni. And they did the same. That that last game, Oni just kind of like overtakes a, look, uh, uh, a tower. And uh, that's a problem. We got Nile River, Isis, passive. This card has the highest power at, the, at this tower. Obtain one additional mana next turn. Eh. Swaps the power and cost of the cards in your opponent's deck. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Copies one of the passive's cards from the opponent's hand and adds it to your hand. I think I'm just... I'm going to go with, with Dark Knight. Because the, the other two are, are a little bit too wacky for me. Like, my deck is more vanilla because it's a starter deck. So those are some synergies that I'm, I'm not quite ready to explore with what I have. So I'm going to choose Dark Dimension. It's just a safer option. And now we got the Mad Clown. The Mad Clown allows us to ramp. We can play Dark Dimension next turn. We're going to Mad Clown into the Tower of Perseverance because we can stop down this, this tier from growing. This tier will grow every time if, 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 if they're winning. But if we're tied, we stop them. So now they have to recommit to keep boosting tier. I could play Dark Dimension, but I think it's better to play Captain Kid because he shuffles the pirate ship. And the earlier I play him, the better. And I, I can play him in the Tower of Authority. Or I can just play him here. I'm going to play him on the left because they may want to reinforce that location to keep going. <laughs> they just kick insane on the right. We Captain Kid, we shuffle. And now it's turn four. And we get the... Oh my goodness, we get the Kraken. The Kraken is perfect here. Destroys a random card from both you and your opponent at this tower. A, an inherently a symmetrical effect. 
But because there's three different towers, we can choose to play Kraken on the middle. And that'll kill the door, and we have nothing on our board to kill for the Kraken. So that's the ideal setup for Kraken. That's why the card is actually pretty, pretty solid. Like, look at this, this is a seven point swing. Okay, the Phantom Thief takes away... Where, where, that, where the fuck that guy was? Um, which is good, because it actually thins our deck. Feeling really confident here. I'm, I'm, I'm whistling all over the place, because uh, as soon as I draw that pirate ship, oh boy, we are just invincible on the left. I can go um, four drop into Elf, and I think that's what I'm going to do. It's, it's time to play Dark Dimension and give a little bit of information as to what they have. Uh, I'm going to play Dark Dimension on the right, and I'm going to play Elf on the left, actually, to try to halt that tier. So we got Zurong. Okay, Zurong is pretty amazing because Zurong becomes a six power when the when the tower is is filled. So Zurong is a good last play on the left. Not a good setup for Uriel. We, we go double double three drop here. I think we're gonna play Undine here, and we're gonna play Zurong here. Undine will buff Kraken. And Zerong is now 6 power. We're stopping that tier from growing all game. We tap again, baby. And we got a King Kong. We got Athena. We can only play one card, though. And I think the best play, the safest play, is the Knight Commander. Because the Knight Commander, when played at the center tower, uh, the power of one random card placed on, on the other ones. So he'll give two power to a random card on each of the flanks. So with Knight Commander, I can spread out my power in a board state which I'm already dominating and I can make sure I don't overcommit to any one lane and they Kraken they kill Captain Kid they weaken that so they're they're able to they're not even able not even with that play they can override it easy and we end up winning all three towers baby just classic basic sequencing you know like resource uh management like knowing where to apply our power not to overcommit in one location or one tower specifically and just going in i really like the the pick face like i think that adds a lot of uh, a big sense of novelty to the game because every match even if you're playing the same deck every match is going to be inherently different because you're going to be offered a different hero and uh, that makes it very exciting because finding, you know, the right hero for the deck that you're playing, like, that takes skill, right? Like, knowing which hero is actually going to benefit uh, more. So it's, it's kind of like blending in draft elements into, into like, uh, a PvP deck versus deck sort of, like, game. And I really, um, I actually really like that. I think any sort of, like, sense of novelty to a card game that isn't overly warping is a positive thing. And I think it's, it's a very neat way how they implemented it here. We can summon cards. Um, I'm still like, I <laughs> I, I goofed and I, I summoned uh, a Topaz summon before recording the video. <laughs> so I kind of derp there, but I'm, I'm pretty close, as you guys can see, uh, to having 100 uh, Topaz coins that will allow me to summon another card. Uh, you gain cards by summoning them or through just unlocking your uh, your rank, right? Like ranking up will allow you to unlock uh, cards here. We can see our next rank reward, which is nine, rank 95, we will get the Jade Rabbit. Uh, the Jade Rabbit is, uh, what do you do? Uh, the power of the cards in your deck increases by one each, draws one card. That seems really neat. We have that. Um, we can go back and forth here. See, we're, we're, we're bronze here. At bronze two, we get the Jade Rabbit. Then we get Mr. Beetle. Then we get the Shinsengumi, the Shinsengumi leader. That's actually really cool. Places one Shinsengumi card in each of your other zones. So it's a six energy, six six mana, sorry, two power card. And uh, spawns to, oh, that's dope. So it's so like spreading out. I, I actually, I, I like the art too. We got Null. If you play at the same tower as your opponent this turn, draws a card. Oh, oh, kind of like that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that Guardians of the Galaxy effect, actually. Tin Man. If no one, if no card is played in this in this zone next turn, power increases by three. Oh, oh, that's that's a cool design. That's really cool. Yeah, as you can see, like as you advance to the game, the the complexity just like skyrockets. And uh, I'm legitimately curious as to see like what the um if a, a competitive like what kind of competitive scene will will surface from this poltergeist. 
Shuffle two dark magic cards into your opponent's deck. Shuffle two dark magic cards into your deck. Dark magic. If a dark magic card is drawn, the power of one of the cards you've placed decreases by one. Oh. Oh, and it's like overstated too. It's like two mana, four power, because it's like a symmetrical effect that can also work against you. I like that. Fox Raccoon. Abaddon. An Anubis. Anubis is looking kind of cute. At the place of this card, power increases by one each time a card... Oh, discard synergy. Nice. There's already discard synergy implemented as well. A big diversity of like of like creatures but in our style that is like it's also like consistent as well which i'm pretty sure a lot of people will appreciate yeah th this is a lot this is a, a lot of the cards that you're unlocking on top of like the cards that you're summoning and uh and of course the diamonds that you're utilizing to uh to also diamond summon as well will allow you to uh slowly but surely unlock your collection and uh, you, it's really cool I, I i wonder how like how decks will look like at a high level here like I'm, I'm gonna have to grind uh, quite a bit, you know, to get to, um, to get to that point. And uh, you know, hopefully, start playing more knowledgeable players. Like I, I haven't lost the game yet <laughs> because I'm a card gamer and I'm, I'm at the bottom of the ladder and I'm facing a lot of people who are like learning how to play the game. You know, through my experience, I can let you know that you know the game is like not overwhelming or anything uh, for like a new player. It has a nice learning curve and it won't take you too, too long at all to know what you're doing. Um, even though it may seem like I just <laughs> steamrolled the opponents, I'm, I'm too low rank to, to where like somebody with my experience should be. So uh, keep that in mind. Very humble too, you know. Uh, as you can see, like I'm, I'm the full package. But yeah, I uh, had a lot of fun. This 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 felt like literally two minutes. <laughs> but I don't I don't want to make this video super long. So let's actually leave it here. Thank you, Tempest Hour Probatio, for sponsoring today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the games, check out the game yourself. It, there'll be a link in the description down below and a pinned comment as well with my referral link. It'll help out my channel and support me and my content. Um, so I would really appreciate that. And uh, thank you guys for giving this game a chance. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys around.